maybe we can sort of go over the works that we have in the show and right. a little bit about our practices and kind of give people who maybe aren't familiar Perfect. with what we do. Yeah. What we do. Yeah. What we do. Yeah. yeah. Ladies first. <laughs> Um, yeah, so our piece is American Reflex, which is screening in this room over, and it's a collaboration that Ali and I did two or three years ago in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, um, and it was basically uh, just a joint collab in terms of Ali capturing a performance that I did on the boardwalk, we talked a little bit about Myrtle Beach and like what that means to you and why we film there. Um, sure. Um, so, well, ha has everyone seen the video? Or, have you guys seen? Yeah. Okay, because I feel like we don't have to explain so much. Maybe we're going to just like get on and 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 get on Get when we went down to Myrtle Beach. Um, I spent summers there growing up and always sort of was surprised by how strange it is there, how there's like a church on every corner, a strip club on every other corner, and it's just like this classic slice of American life um, for, for better and worse. So, you know, the Signe has had been doing these characters, and I mean you can talk more about that. But um, just placing that archetype of a of a woman into that context, we expected something visual and beautiful, um, and conceptually interesting, but we never expected it to escalate uh, to a, her bleeding on the sidewalk and. Yeah, like 25 minutes or whatever. Originally, the, I mean, because like I, I have been performing with that side with that mask and that stripper, like hyper stripper persona for a while, like with and without the mask. And we had both been, you know, I, I really like performing in reality, I like performing on the streets, and we had kind of been discussing the importance of getting outside of New York City, getting outside of places that are like just. Um, um, used to art, you know, used to used to seeing things like that. Like we were talking about how important it is to like sort of pop the bubble of the art world and let art trickle into places that don't normally get exposed to it. And so we were planning this vacation to Myrtle Beach. And we were like, let's do something down there. Let's film something. Let's and, and yeah. And I think originally, by like our plan with that character was. Um, let's like film something beautiful with her, you know, like let's take her to the boardwalk. Yeah, like I'm sure people are gonna interact with her and they'll be fun. We don't know something like funny more than anything, you know, or like funny and getting just like some striking images of the of the cyborg and it's about absurdity. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like there was a there was like a con there, yeah, sure, okay. I think there's a concept behind the cyborg and her look and her ass and, and you know, the mirrored mask is a metaphor in a lot of different ways and I think there uh, in my opinion, one of the strongest things that came out of it was the way that the mirror functions as such a strong object and symbol for so many different facets of identity and perception. Um, and but yeah, I don't know. It just it, it so quickly escalated into something very hostile, violent, and intense. And and yeah, the, like an overarching theme and aura that radiates from this energy of the film is like about this queerness and about just the um, um, audacity of being queer in reality and especially in in America and in in places that are in, in non-metropolis areas. Like it's radical in. I think for a lot of us, we've lived, uh, I don't know how long everyone has lived in a city or in New York, but like, um, we get a little more comfortable and used to every day living our identities as we are in these free cities, but in small towns and, you know, like the Middle East or, you know, a lot of places that are just liberated, it is such a radical act, even if you're, just, if you're even if you're like normative presenting, just to walk out of bed and, and identify as queer and I think that the film kind of unveiled a lot of aspects of, of how 
terrifying life can be for anybody who strays from a heteronormative lifestyle or perspective. Well, it's also so crazy is that like nobody there knew that we were queer. Like, you know, we and were not in the film. Although like, at the time we would what, like we were together at the time and we would go around and just be ourselves like in a relationship and the reactions that we would garner from the townies was always just kind of like, yeah, that was a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So hyper gawking. Yeah. We had people walk into her house like kind of unannounced because they saw us through and, the window and yeah. saw us. We had multiple people. Toy. One person yeah. who yelled at us and threatened to tell her mom on us. <laughs> like, we need to put away the freak show. Mom would tell her mother. It's like, okay, we're grown ass dolls. We're like both over 25. <laughs> Be worried You're on our house. Show. Be worried. Yeah. Be worried. I'm talking about my mom. I'm like, I don't know my mom. I mean, we were dancing in strip to screw like topless inside my house. Okay. But still, like, no one else should come up and tell you not to do that. into our house and and was like, hey, I saw the Virginia plate. You guys said you're from Virginia. I thought like this must be your house. And like I don't know, this is strange entitlement to like other I don't know, it's like I think the, the like the radicality of a queer um, identity is so shocking to so many people and, and I and I think that it's the role of an artist to kind of like start cracking those fibers open so that people who don't typically get confronted with queer theory or queer identity or anything, you know, anything that's raised from a heteronormative lifestyle, I just think that like the world is changing so rapidly and it's really important that we be having like large scale conversations that are bigger than New York City, that are like bigger than our insular bubble of people who get it. And that's why my current book to me is so important is because it did it did kind of like bleed into some people Perception, or you know, it, 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 it was on Fox News, you know, like it, it hit into an audience that, in my opinion, really needs, needs that type of ideology. But what is interesting is that, yes, as a couple down there, we were often like approached by people and they say we're successful. But when we were shooting that, nobody knew that we were a couple. Most people actually didn't even know that we were associated mm -hmm. with each other because we kept our communication so minimal during the shooting. Mm -hmm. And it was just a rumor that was sparked while you were walking around because you're really tall in those stripper shoes that you were a trans woman. Yeah. And so it was, I think it kind of just speaks to the fear of queerness that exists in the South. Like people were confused by this very tall person without a face that could be feminine or could be a man dressed as a woman and they they brought all of that to the table like we didn't even serve it up to them they didn't even know we were a couple or any of that which mm -hmm. is like the inherent fear of queerness just seeps into people's consciousness and they attack you they left you eating on the sidewalk because of that very thing yeah i think there's like a fear there, there's an inherent fear of anything that doesn't like cut and dry and make sense in society, like people are taught to sort of fear what they don't understand, and that's where I think a lot of phobic behavior stems from. It's just like fear of what doesn't make sense, and like seeing me wearing that outfit, wearing that mask, it just like didn't make sense. Why would anybody be doing that? Why would anyone do that? It doesn't make sense, you know. Um, and I think that that is like a kind of interesting thing, kind of going tying back to this show, is like in the prompt about the new flesh exhibition, it's like, uh, from writes a lot about the angles and the shadows and the way that these images and the camera is able to capture like these just very non-linear structures and things that bend and shift and, and, and the way colors and waves come in to interplay within the surface tension of the, of the work. And like that, I think, is a really beautiful metaphor for queer identity and like, like life outside of, you know, the way that queerness extends beyond the body is just, it's like, it's not straight. It is not a straight line. It is not a grid. And like, 
is about limitlessness and not having to adapt or or conform to one straight lifestyle or ideology. And that, to me, is like one of the most beautiful facets of of queerness is is the way it's or or not even the way you know it's like it's the movie it's the inside out it's chaos it's like a and it's a limitless orb that can sort of expand into any way shape or way shape or form that we want so and I feel like tying back to your work yeah well it's um, otherness right yeah otherness. so I think that that's really what the show is about is sort of Whereas like my work is very entrenched in like LGBTQ uh, typical identity, right? Like I'm looking at stuff through like a historical lens, um, but it still fits into the whole sort of spectrum of otherness, and so that's why I think work like my piece Cherry Lips can sort of live side by side with American Indian Flats, just because of its otherness and, and sort of the way that people react to that otherness. Side note, I knew Sydney since like she was like a freshman in college. Yeah, and so I got to see these characters develop and she was like one of my favorite students there. He so was like cur- he was the curator of my first show ever. It was called Rock and Roll Cheeseburger Slumber Party. Yeah, and you like <laughs> have you yeah. any of your parents gave yeah, of and there was like yeah, yeah. slider cheeseburgers. Yeah. Um, and, right and it was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool exhibition, but you would always have like these characters where you would throw yourself in and fully. And I always really admired and respected that. Like, you had no qualms about being, like, unsexy or, like, just completely, like, she would dress and drag as an analog where, like, you would put Vaseline on your face and oil yourself up and just do, like, to be, like, a prepubescent, like, teenager. You were always, like, very committed to the things you were doing. And so I think that comes through when Allie's filming you in American Reflex. So, like, your commitment to the role that you're playing. I think that's really admirable because that was a scary situation watching that film. You're bleeding on the sidewalk and that woman comes and shoves you and completely dehumanizes you. There's so much about being dehumanized in that video and and, um, I think that that is something that I just wanted to say that I really love about your video is just how it kind of reflects the times that we're living in and uh, that it's really ironic that Fox News would actually air it. And they yeah. aired it with this kind of just like, what's this? And like, I, there, was, there was sort of this like in the in the news report that because it was like it got picked up by Fox News local station, like kind of like Associated Press, and the AP can license like you know like the same segment to multiple Fox News around the country. So and it was all just kind of like. Is it art? <laughs> like, no, that was the best part. What here is in the art? Fox yeah. News anchors talking about yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. Art? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm like, 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 like watch that clip on YouTube. Yeah. And you're thinking like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's so bizarre. Like, it's so over their head. It's like they are the problem. But um, yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to say that part. Thanks. Um, but as far as I guess, like my work and what I do, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, just a little background. I was born in 1986 here in Brooklyn, well, not in Brooklyn, but Brooklyn, um, and uh, my uncle was a gay man, lived and loved and worked in New York City. He died in 1989 from complications of HIV and AIDS, and so my whole life was sort of like a mystery in my family, and you know, um, it was almost as if he had never existed, and I, I found out about him later in life, and sort of wanted to know more about him and when I was in graduate school I started to pursue these um, ideas of like lost history specific to like LGBTQ um, history, you know, post Stonewall riots and I really kind of went down the rabbit hole. And all I ever had was one photo of my uncle that was given to me from my father before we became estranged um, and he was my father's uh, brother. Older so, or younger? Um, older and he was the only son to go to college. He was like he was very self-made, he did a lot of these things on his own, and very admirable person, and unfortunately when he died, and when he came out, actually when he came out, and then when he wound up dying of um, age-related illnesses, he was kind of shunned from the family. Did uh, you ever meet him? Uh, he was in the delivery room when I was born, uh, mm-hmm. but I don't have recollection of him because That's I was... interesting, though, you did, like, the yeah. very first seconds of your life. He was, you were, so yeah. So you did, like, have this it's very strange to think about it like that, but um, yeah, um, I was three years old when he passed away. Um, mm-hmm. And so that kind of became the impetus for the work that I make. 
and um, I've become very, you know, invested in looking at uh, a specific part of like gay culture that's um, done through printed media. So I take a lot of pornographic magazines that are specific to um, 1970s post Stonewall riot leading up to the AIDS epidemic around 1983. And so that's my sort of time capsule, but that's the amount of time that I allow myself to go through imagery. And I sort of call these magazines for uh, these um, very cliche tropes that happen over and over again, sort of this homogenous, sort of gay, white, male ideal that sort of never really existed. Um, and I look at it with a little bit of a critical eye, but also make it a, a stand-in for this generation of men that consume this image. Um, so there's a lot of mustaches in the work, <laughs> there's a lot of like the same things over and over again. Um, I was talking recently to somebody about this particular piece and like you know, why I chose to highlight the image movie that I did, what was it about the crops, and you know, I use a lot of negative space in my imagery and that's something that's come over time where um, I was heavily influenced with collage and everything, was like, tons of work in the frame, what could I do as much as I could in, in frame of the photo and over time it's really just been about letting go and learning like what is the most essential like distilled image and so for me I was really drawn to this um, image in like the map set of the magazine where it's this cherry in this man's mouth which is uh, we know it's a gay image, even though there's nothing that really implies it's gay. We just sort of know the culture of like what is a homoerotic image. This trope of a woman with a cherry in her mouth, sort of Lolita, the stem fatale, like that's acceptable in mass media um, for you know projecting a sexuality. But when you put it in a man's mouth, it's automatically sort of been feminized. Mm -hmm. if that's the word you want to use, and so it becomes inherently like homoerotic. And so I was really drawn to that image and um, like the expansive black to the left of it and the white. And so a lot of the imagery is just about loss and sort of loss of history, loss of community, but doing it through these sort of critical engagements and interventions with magazines. Um, I really just love printed material. I'm very drawn to like the pictures generation and the work that was made during that time period. Um, I studied under Sarah Charles once, so that probably has something to do with it. Um, but um, I just, I really am just fascinated by the way that we can um, interrogate imagery now that we sort of weren't, we weren't thinking about back then. Um, unfortunately, there was nobody in the pictures generation that was making work that was looking critically at these representations of male sexuality and um, these mock ups of male sexuality, I like to say, because I think there is sort of this mock up oh, machoism that um, is, is trying to be perpetuated through these relentless <laughs> images and these tropes. Um, but yeah, so I sort of operate from that viewpoint and um, it's, it's, you know, started with my uncle and then it became about this whole other thing. And um, I have a piece right now that's in um, a traveling museum show called Art Aids America. And, um, it was made over the course of six months where I systematically went through Blue Boy magazine between its first issue in 1974 and 1983 when they wrote the first article on gay related immune deficiency syndrome. So labeling AIDS as specifically a gay disease at that time period. And so what I did was I highlighted all of the center for the male models making eye contact and it's a stand in for the men who consume the imagery. So it, becomes like a grid of a hundred images. And so that was kind of a really like first first time in my practice where I was like, all right, I'm really committed to the printed media and pushing this this um, you know agenda, if you will, like this lost history but the, <laughs> the gay agenda. Um, the, what is it, the pink scare. Um, <laughs> right? um, so it was kind of like it, it happened after I mean, yeah, it was like and like the symbol like a pink swastika or like the Christian right thought that in the 80s. I spent a lot of time researching and spending like hours reading the articles that appear in these magazines. What and, magazines are you calling from? Um, Blue Boy Magazine, Torso, and Honcho. My personal favorite is Blue Boy Magazine because um, it's part of Shibat. 
you know? And part of the, the original song about like masturbation and from Jay Walker. Yeah, so yeah. um and you know, so I used those magazines to make that giant large installation piece and um that was back in 2012, it's 2016, almost 2017, I'm still doing it. But the work's evolving and it's constantly changing and so um, I've just been using as much information as possible, you know, distilling imagery and trying to get to its most essential um, meaning. So that's really what my work's about, um, how I see it fitting into the show. Yeah, it's funny, I just finished an installation this past week um, it was like a peep show, and one of the one of the eye holes that you look into is like a supercut of like retro porn, basically. And like I specifically like a like a certain aesthetic of kind of this like new wave '80s retro porn. Yeah. And in my like culling of gifts and little media to snip into it. I was like seeing so many like rich images of women like in here own and then I started thinking halfway through I was like wait this is like very much you know for me missing like a queer eye to it or like a just a gay agenda yeah. and uh -huh. so then I started looking for I started looking for uh, things that would like hit on that aesthetic that I was working with this kind of like fun funky retro porn thing that had a queer eye or a queer gaze or not such an male gaze capturing like the bikini babe thing, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And I was like looking for more gay porn that kind of hit on that, looking for lesbian porn, looking for, you know, like all el anything that would fall under an LGBTQ identity porn, and it was just very hard to find anything that was rich, fun, and colorful that didn't fall under like the male gaze heteronormative umbrella yeah. and like after a while I was like wait should I even be doing this it's so like <laughs> one note yeah. like, like visually and so I think it's interesting that you're working to like source from this sort of well it's very cliche and like I'm, I'm like really aware of that I mean, it's like complicated work because yeah it's I mean the point is that yeah it's, it's, <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I personally look way better with a mustache than without one. Like, I have, like, a it's very too. on brand. For yeah, you. it's very on brand for me. Like, yeah. I remember Chloe or Short was just like, you look like your work. And yeah. So I was like, I was over that. Like, she also told me to like go to the Eagle and like find a guy to fist me for yeah. a photo. <laughs> and she was like, she was like, I want you to go find some of the Ram. And I was just like, wow. That's a great grit. Yeah, it was like my like second graduate school. Grit. It was a really interesting like conversation. I didn't because I'm not into that. And okay. nothing wrong if you are into that. I just like don't want anybody to do my heart or my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, where were we? What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I've been like, it's been a long day. So I just, like, you talked about McLaughlin earlier. I did, I saw Tom McLaughlin of like, um, Twin Peaks fame. Showgirls, really, though, and I was yeah, really girl. excited. I was like, can we just talk about Showgirls? Yeah, and I made like the mistake of like standing on the corner, clutching my chest, and oh, McLaughlin! Oh my god! He was, like, he was like not amused, that's why. He was just like, hi, and like kept watching kind of the Chelsea Bowl movie. Um, but I walked two and a half miles to get here because I needed to like calm down and I felt like so fucking like hyped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because Showgirls is like such an important film. And I, you know, I mean, there's a lot of neon in that film, so I could see how that could like tie into like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 yeah. 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 You ate the chips. No, you ate the chips. Shout out, you ate the chips. There's a lot of food. Yeah, no, <laughs> we used to talk about like getting a gilded frame. Having it put in. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
he's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all good though. Yeah, no. Um, right. But this time, he's bringing you over the edge. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how we like tie this back. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where do we go from here? I'm sorry. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you feel your words relate to each other? Um, I mean, you seem to be on it right now with this movie. But <laughs> Yeah, well, I feel like my work is so sparse, right? And so, and your work is so visually really appealing. So, <laughs> I hope like my work's not really boring next to you. It's not. <laughs> no, I, I think that's really, like, well, sort of about uh, his, the history yeah. of yeah. culture, and ours is about like the present. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like they be. Stuck in the past. No, no, no. I think examining. I think that you're taught, taking it from a modern perspective because you're looking at it through the scope of modernity via erasure. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like exactly. your work is um, looking at the erasure of homosexual and gay and trans culture, yeah. queer culture, through our like vast scope and, and scale, you know what I mean? Yeah. Same with like like not being able to find any rich rich looking gay porn to put into my yeah. into my thing. It's like it just there the the market is so saturated towards a heteronormative perception and yeah. it makes it I don't know it just makes it it, it it's not even all linked to, to queerness. It's like it really is anything that falls out in the outlying minority of not being, no offense to any any straight white male, cis males, but like, y'all have held the mic since day one, and, and held the microphone and held the money to make <laughs> things happen, and therefore anybody who doesn't put, like, who didn't fall under those categories um, gets left behind, and therefore, you know, and, and or, you know, for example, like, Black women, you know, just in conversations that I've had with friends, like they, they watch TV growing up, and you don't see beauty ads talking about or catering towards towards a black woman's hair or skin, and and then it's just you're constantly bombarded by images of white girls, and like same goes for sexuality, same goes for porn, same goes for desire, you know, and yeah. like so I think that like your work is examining this like serious, um, you know, like the blank spaces present in your work to me, they they really do speak towards the blank space that I think a lot of people feel in their identity perception because just I think, I mean, I, I know that we've been having conversations about these things for a really long time, but they've been quote unquote underground and the internet is a um, very modern aspect that is, or modern technology that is giving us a platform and a vessel to un- unleash the underground on on uh, the mainstream. You know? yeah. like, we've been having these conversations in Lower East Side galleries for 40 years, 50 years, 80 years, you know, like for, for you know, for a long time, artists and, and queer circles have been talking about these themes for a really, really, really long time, but they've been in small spaces like this. And the internet and and just the exposure that technology is giving us, I think it's giving us like much more of a of a megaphone yeah. to yell back at the people who hold, who hold the power and the money and the um, production studios. Well, I think it's really important to sort of insert yourself wherever you can, um, depending like you know everybody has a unique voice, right? And it's like now more than ever you have that opportunity where you can sort of insert yourself and let it be known, like you know, what it is that, like, your viewpoint, and I think, um, I'm coming from a point of view of, like, okay, I look at the pictures generation, and there wasn't anybody who was queer and, like, really looking at the culture of imagery the way that I'm looking at the culture of imagery that I can find. You know, Peter Gujar, Robin Maplethor, David Wanderovic, they're making really important portrait work during that time period that's sort of documenting the AIDS epidemic, and so I look at the people who are in picture generation and there are a lot of straight sort of cisgender identities there and so my way of queering that up is by inserting myself into it and inserting my own viewpoint into it and making a queer version of the picture generation so it becomes something different and you're able to take something like uh, you know American Reflex and you're able to put it on the platform now and you're able to sort of insert yourself and kind of change the narrative in a way that I think is really profound. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how I see it. So. Yeah. 
I even kind of, well, sorry, I wish to, but like, but just like to stick on the pictures and everything, and like embodying and like living your brand. It's like, how do you feel about like, like embodying kind of like a contradictory, like the persona, like two lesbians that are blonde making out, and like you and your mustache, but yeah. like, like building a dialogue out of like kind of like making well, that. Well, it's really like, complicated. Yeah. And it's, it's something that you have to really be careful with. And yeah. so, like, you're only looking at one of my images here, but um, something that happens in these magazines is there's a very, like, um, well, there's a heteronormative, mm -hmm. like, you know, there's not very, like, uh, feminine gay men in these magazines. It's really yeah. kind of negative yeah. mm -hmm. um, yeah. stereotype that's being perpetuated. It's very white when there are, you know, black representation, it's mm -hmm. exoticized. Mm -hmm. I have pieces that talk about that. And I think that's really important. You know, like, um, my Blue Boy grid, you know, doesn't have a lot of um, ethnic variety in it because that's a sign of the times, you know, it's printed material. And so it's, you gotta be really, um, you know, as long as you're aware of those issues and you, you're you able to acknowledge them and try and make that, um, you know, bring that representation to the work, I think that's half of the battle, but mm -hmm. It's also, it's not really my place to be making work with a magazine like Black Inches, you know? Like, yeah. I would be like fetishizing like yeah. the gay black mm -hmm. male body and I wouldn't be doing any any good with yeah. it. And so I'm, I'm very aware of like, my privilege, I'm very aware of my like my identity, and and so it's really important to be critical of that when you're working with, um, for me, I'm working with mass media, you know? I, I can't help but that I would go with a mustache, no, but no. like that's, that's, that's part of like the way I, I just, I'm Italian, you know, I'm Italian. I see another Paisan over there, and he's actually from Italy, you know, I'm, I'm Brooklyn by way of Bay Ridge, he's Brooklyn, you know, by way of like, Rome probably, but you know, it's important to like be aware of these things and be sensitive to these, to these issues because I think you know, a lot of people have a lot of white fragility and they don't want to be like, ooh, what did I do? Um, you know, you just need to listen. Yeah. You, know, you just need to fucking I mean, listen. that's something that we, uh, an issue that we ran into with American Reflux as well as like the press talking about transphobia in our piece and neither of us are trans, right? So it's like, we were doing a screening in DC once and... It was our very first First one. And our first like, second one. The first Q, like Q and A type yeah. thing, like, and um, a person in the audience uh, named Joy was like, "How can you possibly talk about the trans experience? You're both uh, cis girls, you know. Like you don't know what that is, and this small thing that happened to you is just a tiny like a piece blip. of what I experience regularly, and um, you know." Uh, but we didn't choose to really make a piece about that. It just kind of happened. And yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't knowingly make make work about the trans experience because I can't speak to that. It's just like sort of. So I know what you're saying about black and kids. But that's like a whole set of issues that like you know doesn't get talked about by often by like gay white artists because. It's again white fragility and wanting to like, oh, 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 you know, but yeah. it exists, right? Like there's like there is like a gay white man that wants to like uh, fetishize, and you know, like you sort of sort of you, you see it now on like Grindr screen caps, like there's websites about just like how racist people are even when they're cruising for sex. So like mm -hmm. at least there's a conversation being had and people are being called out on it, and I think mm -hmm. that that's like a really important part of like the conversation within the LGBT community. You know, mm -hmm. um, that that is just starting, but it's been there. Like I'm looking at these depictions of these different, you know, like Latin lovers, and like what is what does a Latin lover look like in 1977? You know, post Stonewall riots, pre AIDS epidemic. Um, it's you know it's stereotype, and so breaking those down and, and and being aware of that is really important. I think. Yeah, I think that. For you and I, the way we were kind of like thrust into a conversation that was centered, because I'm like a really large theme that came out of American Reflex is transphobia, and because you know the math, it it really does make my gender totally open to you know open to interpretation, and since that became like a huge 
aspect of our film, like it became something that we had to talk about, like on a large platform. Mm -hmm. And um, what I think we kind of came to terms with is like, you and I are both allies to 100%, and we don't seek to speak for anybody else's lived experience, especially, you know, like. I kind of think that the term, like, you can walk a mile, or, you know, like, you have to walk a mile in someone's shoes to really understand what they go through, and, like, I literally walked a mile <laughs> in those stripper hills in that film, and I did get, to, I mean, that night, I did, I, t I tasted what it would feel like to be a trans person for, a, for an hour, you know, and, like, what it would feel like to, like, can literally constantly live in fear for just being who you are, for just being inherently born a certain way and looking a certain way. Especially down there. Yeah, especially like in the middle of America. I mean, like hatred just breathes down there in all senses of the word, be it if you're, you know, not white or if you're, um, even, you know, like, I think even if I were, even if I weren't wearing the mask and they could see me as like a, as a white girl that I am, like, there would have still been animosity. There would, have been, would, have, there would have been like the like the threat of like physical violence or sexual violence, just being a woman inherently in that yeah. situation. Like there's nothing that totally. you can do about that. So Yeah, I mean like and race culture is a huge part of the film as well. Just like I think a lot of people honestly are dressed like kind of in the way that I'm dressed. The heels throw you off. The heels are like pretty provocative. Some of the guys have left clothes on their knees. Oh, that's, that's like part of the course, though. Like, <laughs> you know, that's like always how it is. Skin everywhere. But yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, I just found myself thinking, like, I will. I'm not. We were not interested in trying to speak for a trans experience. But I am very proud to be an ally and to be able to like have made a work that could maybe open some people's eyes to what life outside of their own body might feel like. And like that kind of comes back to a theme of the show at large, of just, just like what, like just perceptions of, of identity outside of your lived experience and like how we can represent and capture that in photography and in art and video and in performance and in our everyday lives, like just living, walking down the street. Like I think that, that there's a really big argument to be made for like I don't know, living your truth, living how you really feel, not not being afraid or ashamed of of who you actually are or like the way or you know, how you who you, who you want to love, how you want to present yourself, like if you were raised a certain way and you strayed from that to be closer to who you truly are, I think that like requires a serious amount of courage and there is a literal art to it, even if it's not even if you don't consider yourself an artist, I think that there is like an art to true, like living your true self, and that like comes out in all of our work. Yeah, and just otherness, and like I think it's such a timely, like the show is like very perfectly timed. Like think about the themes of everything that's going on, in, like this election cycle, and, like the xenophobia, the misogyny. Mm -hmm. um, there's that's a lot. That, there's like a lot that's at play right now. And so I think it's it's interesting to have a show about queerness that sort of you know, Ephraim wants to take it away from sexuality, right? Because that's the typical, like, identity of queer, and I brought it back to that, so sorry. <laughs> um, but, uh, you it up. but, you know, um, so I just think that it's, you know, it's a timely thing to be discussing, and it doesn't have to be about art, but we're making, a, we're, make, we're artists, and we're making a show, so yeah. things are coming, but, um, you know, like, it, it, these are themes that go beyond what this gallery is representing, what the show is representing, these are, you know, you turn on the news, and, you know, you look through your Facebook, wall, you know, feed, and your aunt, a <laughs> racist. Yeah, let's do questions. Um, I was born and raised in Atlanta, so going and growing up in Atlanta, you're always, um, you know, everybody's going to Myrtle Beach. It's very much oh, the you picturesque. Yeah, <laughs> my parents go, everyone goes. It's kind of the ideal vacation spot yeah, yeah. to go with your family. Redneck Riviera. <laughs> 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 so, do you think that, do you think that that same kind of almost case study of this kind of taking away the face? of you and like serving it there and being so uh, objectified and harassed, do you think, how does that translate in other kind of uh, 
areas of like Myrtle Beach around the country that are kind of very much situated in like central vacation kind of picturesque street, you know, ideal yeah. kind of country. Well, I think like Ali and I are both really inspired by spectacle and like places that attract like entertainment yeah. and fun vacation and yeah, vacation like yeah. bring your family like they all the same come get your cotton they all have the same souvenir they all have the same thing like every, every single souvenir shop same cotton souvenir but with a different funnel thing on them. different font yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um and yeah i don't know i think there's like something really radical about um infiltrating a quote unquote safe space like yeah, that, yeah. you know? It's like, it's like flipping the concept of the safe space. You know like what when I mean? Disney World has gay day. Oh, did they do that? Oh, my mom, so my mom is in Orlando and so she would like sell like packages or whatever to families or whatever she does. And she would have to say, oh, you don't want to go to the you don't want to go to the park on this day, and she would have to like her manager yeah, have, make her just wait. We're having sex in the. My, I mean, my mom was doing what, but like you know, but yeah, like you would have to like dissuade people from going to gay day. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I think that like there's something kind of punk about going to these like heteronormative white bread places and performing a queer act or like. I don't know, making out at Milo. It was <laughs> 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 like this shitty um, uh, grocery store that we used to go to and just like be really weird at. I mean, it was like so cookies. Um, nothing to do with oh. It does <laughs> have something to do with it because it's like, it's like about, it's about perverting the heteronormativity. It's about like... You're also a troll. Okay. You love <laughs> trolls. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> anyone would ever fuck with us, she'd be like, oh yeah? Oh, yeah. I personally, I'm not speaking for Ali, but I personally get off on like, on um, <laughs> making, yeah, I don't know, like getting in people's faces for it. Because like, cause, like, it's like, everybody wants to make us feel bad for being who, who we are. Everyone like wants to um, subvert our ideologies and identities and like, like even, I don't know, as women or as queer people or if you're a person of color, like there's always someone who's gonna try and like kind of give you a little bit of shit and like, I don't know, I just think that we're at a point in um, time. It's been, we've been on this earth for a pretty damn long time, and like, you know, in the human race, that there's a certain point where you're just not gonna take it anymore. And I'm not out here trying, as like some YouTube commenters like to point out, like, what about the children? Like, she's like, mm, what about the children? They're have to look at her doing that. Like, like squatting <laughs> on the street, like <laughs> half naked or whatever. Wait, and it's did like... Did I just say that Tommy Ungerer, a children's author, is on the equivalent of like an old priest pride, and once said, if it weren't for fucking, there'd be no children? Yeah, for real. <laughs> so we should be exposing the children to that right out the... Out uh, the womb. Not right up your pussy. Yeah, pussy. Yeah, pussy. But I guess you like. You're lovely. Yeah. I don't know why you get so crazy. I mean, that's, so that's what I think is interesting about the curation of this show. It's like a, a lot of queer art is about dicks and vaginas. And this is taking a departure from that. And it's like, this is art made by queer people. And it's queer teams, but it's not like banging on the head of a hammer like, yeah. is it gay? Yeah. You know it's really gay, you know? Like, <laughs> I think maybe that's really we're moving important. on past yeah. that, right? I, I, that's the other thing I didn't get to say, because now you brought something up that's really important. I don't have dicks in any of my work. It's very rare that there's a dick in my work, because mm -hmm. I'm using pornography, mm -hmm. and I'm subverting it by and appropriating it. Otherwise, it would just be a dick. It would be mm -hmm. pornography. So, like, people, like, <laughs> like, there was this really horrible review for my last show, and they're like, I wanted to see glory holes, and but fucking okay. is what this person says. Like, I was like, I was like, 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 I don't have Finland Wakesley. Like, I walk the walk. I have 14 dicks tattooed on my thigh. Like, I broke my mom's heart. Like, trust me. But like, there's like a time and a place, and I just don't think like you know, there's so much gay art out there with yeah. dicks. And it's and that's cool. Like, yeah, get them for me. Yeah. But like, I don't like, I don't, I don't know. And also, you're not going to get your point across to the people who I think that we're seeking to 
to be it's about fun. infiltrating, okay? Yeah. Like, I got a lot of straight people that look at my work and they don't even realize it's gay until it's gay and then it's like too late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so like warm and it's so yeah. beautiful and I'm like, that's how I just got you roped in. Yeah. You know, you gotta like... Gay agenda. Honestly, the gay that. agenda is real. <laughs> The pink scare is real, and you just have to like, you know, like find a way to bring them in. And yeah, like, well, there's a seduction to it. I'm like, so embarrassed because you're like, you know, are we live? Oh, we are. You asshole. <laughs> My mom's gonna be like, comment, very cool, son, very nice. <laughs> like, she like the way she like types on Facebook. It's just like, <laughs> very cool, like, son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I do think that like, there's all. I mean, in terms of like the troll or whatever. It's like, but there, it's true. There, if you <laughs> the art of the troll. The art of the troll. Um, there is, but it, and I've heard it before that like, especially with a queer scene that like. There can be something actually very dangerous about being too overt or or like pornographic or sexual with your work because it's in I think the an expectation surrounding queer identity is like that of the deviant, you know? Like of the like well, all these people are just like they're just evil deviants and they're like shedding for and they're straying from what's right and like what's good and and if we if we're too hardcore in our imagery or our whatever our our, um, our visual it's about edging. Yeah, it's about edging. We okay, like edge. you're talking about edging. We're talking about edging before everybody showed up, <laughs> actually. So in what way? Really, in what way were we? Well, we're talking about cotton cloth. Okay. Like, yeah. I think we're talking about edging to him. I think. Yeah, I something like that. <laughs> we're just talking about showgirl. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think that there is like this is subtlety as well, like of of how to go about all that. And like even though I'm being provocative in American Reflex and I'm like gyrating my hips and flashing some underwear here and there, like it only was that was like sort of a reaction to the assault that was happening. It's like people wanted so badly to beat me into submission to stop me from doing what I was doing and. And, a rea and my reaction was to that was like, no, I'm just going to give it to you harder and meaner than you were originally getting it, you know, and like, and they felt so entitled to gendering me and figuring out who I was and what my, why I was doing that, to the point where like, they physically attacked and assaulted me. Well, that was the thing, they felt entitled to touch your yeah. body. Like, yeah. that was the part that I found, like, obviously the most disturbing is like, Men like dancing up on you shirtless, like with no clothes on. Oh and, yeah, they like reached out my shirt. Yeah. you and, and touching you. Totally, like, they 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 reached out my shirt. They full on sexually harassed me as well. I mean, like you see the woman push me, but like they were like throughout, like men reaching up my skirt, trying to grab my genitalia, to figure out like what was going on there. And that's just another wild thing about like the way that we live within our gendered lives is like there is this strange um, entitlement that people seem to feel, especially like people who aren't woke or like enlightened to the way that that this should, this type of thing should be talked about and handled is like there is no, n nobody owes you anything in terms of like who you are, or what your sexuality or or preferences, like, and, and nobody, and, and I think that that is, like, a bigger dialogue that needs to be happening, like, on a national level of, like, this is not, like, a, a person's um, pronouns are something that, like, increasingly we need to be conscious and mindful of and not misgendering people, and, like, and if you don't know, it's okay to ask, but you're, it's not okay to just attack and assault and do it and do it in such, like, a vicious way. I don't know, I think there's a lot of like larger conversations that need to happen as these these uh, identities become more and more a part of like our culture at large. Because it's just ignorant to pretend like this isn't a thing. You know, it's like, it, that's really where I'm at right now. It's like, if you want to deny these sides of life, you're just, you're just living in the past and you're, you're ignorant. Um, I was wondering if you guys thought of like, after, you know, American Reflex. So, like, I definitely got a lot of, like, queerness aspects in, in the short. But, like, you know, Ali, you said, like, there's a church on every block and then there's a strip club, strip club on every other block. And it seems like place is, like, not only, like, thrives in contradiction, but, like, it's a precondition of, like, this contradiction, 
contradictions that exist, right? Like people seem to be totally okay. The idea that there's a church on this block and there's a strip club across the street. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, you're like almost like it's like the South has this like is like it just engenders this like subversive dialogue of like what and when are things appropriate. And it's easy to feel like, well people are just people down there. So much more complicated than that, where like you're bringing the contradiction to the surface, and you're not like I'm sure that if you were in the Buster Club wearing what you wore with that sideboard like that mirror mask on, it'd be like, all right, cool man, like you get mm -hmm. hit down with it, yeah, you can make money. <laughs> but like since you're bringing, it, you're like, you're literally like out of place. Yeah, right? and so like people, like I feel like when I was watching the video, it just like reacted so violently that because you were like almost like breaking this like this like subversive narrative that nobody wants to talk about and that everybody mm -hmm. understands. Um, right. Like taking that and putting it yeah. on the street in front of people in real life. And it also that character represents an archetype of a woman that you see on TV all the time, right? Like yeah. this whole long beautiful woman. And it's like you know, been in our culture for so long, but when it's dropped on the street, uh, you know, in normal society, it's confusing and people reacted, like they didn't know how to handle it, you know? Well, especially with the identity removal. Like, yeah. It almost seemed like they were like, we're gonna teach you a lesson for being out of place. Yeah, your place. know your place. Really yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's a really big thing that I think a lot of Anybody who doesn't fit a status quo often is made to feel by like bullies, you know, or by or like by whomever has the power in the room or the place, you know, and like mm -hmm. even if like you're a goth queen at the mall, like oh, thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, you really like, you know, like I don't know, it's like or like and that's like a weird example, you know, like you like like you're a little like weird, you know, you know, for, like using a high school example, you know, like. Whomever has the power, like the the jock types, are going to like gang up on you or whatever. Or like if you're a little queer or weird, like a bro at a bar might be like, mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Like they'll say something stupid to you. And yeah, it's like about this, like know your place. And it's like guess yeah. what? All of this is my place. Like and and it's and that's just the way it is. And you and like that is a something that requires some like action on our part, activism in a way, you know, like I think there's a form, like even though this falls under like the artistic umbrella, and I wouldn't say that like, like this is to this piece, but like there's an, there is an element of like infiltrating real spaces and real places where it's not expected of us to and be. And the patriarchy is so heavy there, like you can just feel it all around you. Like on the t-shirts people are wearing, like, yeah. you part know, party with sluts, sluts or like, <laughs> you know, we, we, bought we did, there. we do own those. <laughs> <laughs> but for fun. Um, <laughs> uh, and so it's, yeah, it's, it was important to put that character amongst all of that to really, to, to amplify it, to, to put her in this, this setting. I mean, obviously, and that's how it unfolded, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, space and place are definitely, and you know, I think it would have, um, maybe something, it would have been a different film if we would have filmed it on like the Atlantic City boardwalk. Or, or here. Or, yeah, or we here. We did it in Times Square, like, with Elmo and fucking I Batman. did something in Times Square like two weeks ago, and I actually did have some similar reactions. It was interesting. I like filmed mm. a piece of that. With my, I have like a selfie stick on my face, basically, and it's kind of like an evolution of a mirror. But instead of when I have the phone on my face, it's my face on the phone, so people can only look at me through the phone. And I was just wearing like a nude, like a nude top thing, and it was interesting. Like, uh, I didn't I, know what you were doing. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, I was just wearing like this, basically, and um. Maybe if you're <laughs> it's, a, it's a flesh tone top. Yeah. Um, is this the one you were wearing? Yeah, it's different. Oh. Um, but this woman ran after me. She's like, hey, girl. Oh, wow. Like, wow, wow. Look at that sexy girl. Wow, wow. And screaming at the camera people. What is she doing? What is she doing? Like, freaking out. Mm -hmm. And it was a woman. It was, like, the most aggressive person in the back. Because, like, I was gaining a crowd. 
be woman on woman crime is like yeah, so yeah. real. Yeah. No, it was like that's what happened in this film too. Like yeah. that woman was blonde and white. Mm -hmm. and no, she was like, the white one that attacked you. It's because women are taught to hate themselves or to hate each other because we're all like sort of vying for uh, hierarchy. Because power is so withheld from from anyone who's not like a white straight guy that. Pa like, like it's it's like a rat race for anybody else, and like women especially are just like always taught to view each other as competition. And whenever you see, because she's the chicken time star of the street performer, and she was like, "You're coming my dick." Yeah, yeah. So where the fuck is your license? Yeah. <laughs> what was she wearing? She was one of the like topless painted chicks. Uh. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know they didn't break it up the hustle. I didn't even take a chance. I was just out there for the art. Let's do one more question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anyone have any other questions? I have one. Um, so how were you guys, how did you guys mentally prepare for this performance? Like, how did you, you know, mentally prepare yourself? Like, were you aware of, like, the timing? Like, you know, uh, Yeah, totally. Well, that day was interesting. We kind of like woke up really early that day. Like and at five in the morning. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. We knew going in. That day was electric as fuck. Yeah. Like the whole day, we just knew. It was like I think we had to been together for like a year, like, like year. our anniversary or something. That week was. Yeah. And the way it was so great. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, for us. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but. No, oh, yeah, we, we went to the beach in like five in the morning and we and you we had the mask on. Yeah, we, and we were like practicing. Like yeah. I Jackson, we like gave birth to the cyborg alley, like filmed this video of me like coming out of the water and <laughs> then <laughs> coming up and we're like, it didn't be really weird. <laughs> <laughs> and we yeah, we practiced a ton with the and mask. We had the hot dog shop. Hot dog shop. She ate a hot dog. Uh, yeah, she ate a hot dog, the <laughs> character. Not you, that's kind of funny. Did you guys think that you were going to be like, you know, Yeah. Well, I, no, no, we didn't know that. We knew we were like, tonight we're going to the board, like we'd gone to the boardwalk a couple times during our trip, and we knew it was kind of like a speedy, speedy place, and we knew that Saturday night in August was like the richest time of the year to go, and so we were like, okay, we're going to film something, let's go to the boardwalk on Saturday night. So we had like, kind of like all day long, we've been like playing with the mask a little bit, just like, you know, I feel like you were kind of playing with the camera to see how, like, mm -hmm. it, you know, how to capture reflections in it. Mm -hmm. And just, like, I, and for me, it was, like, about getting a little bit more used to, like, working, working my body with She really had a whole backstory. Like, she came out of the ocean, <laughs> and then she went to the hot dog place, <laughs> and then she went and got, like, a t-shirt or whatever. <laughs> she was, like, really good. That never made it into the film. Like, yeah, yeah, we have, we, we have, like, the, like, the, the, the time work daily. <laughs> We have yeah. also when the cops broke it up, like there's a lot of stuff we didn't actually do. It's like to maintain a mystique around the film, you know, obviously. Um, but yeah. And every part that I actually talked to Signing in real life, we cut it out. Yeah, there, cause there's a couple moments where Ali is like kind of talking to me about like what's going on, and I'm kind and of like, like go that way yeah. or whatever, because you couldn't see very far. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> but we wanted, and in the editing, we made it so we chopped it up a lot, and you know, played with time, and cre like um, kind of turned this character into a cyborg with our editing. That you know, that didn't exist in in real life, and um, so. Yeah, we wanted it, her voice to kind of be like the sounds that we captured, and by playing with time and creating the sounds, like working like, the sounds, yeah, like her like voice glitches. came through with the glitches. And because um, she doesn't really get to express emotion, so she doesn't have a voice or expression on her face. So like the only way we were able to really give her um, her own means of expression was through media and like. To me, that's like a expression of like of what the cyborg means is like it's more than a body, and it's it's, it's like a fusion of body and machine, you know, and like mm -hmm. and by mixing like my my body performance with the media that you captured, it was like a mm -hmm. way of like creating these like fast-paced cries, essentially like cries for help. But the 
further answer your question, when we when it ended, it ended when the cops broke it up, and every, well, you kind of chased everyone away or whatever, <laughs> and then <laughs> with your heels and everything, and then the cops came around with their bicycles and were like, "What is going on?" And we we're like, "Oh my god!" And now you're showing up. <laughs> it's just like it been like four to five hour. minutes. Yeah, and um. Uh, so, like, this is not a goddamn circus! <laughs> <laughs> so, we made our way, we had to walk all the way back to the car, like from the starting point, and we got in the car and we were, we were just like, we got went as fast as we could, we got in the car and we were speeding away, and we just like looked at each other and screamed! <laughs> we just screamed at the top of our lungs, like, like what the fuck just happened to us? You know? We're like, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and my legs like covered in blood. Yeah. Also, after after the cop broke it up, like like the cop was like, what are y'all doing? Like, what is this? So, you know, cause, and I was really scared that like I was gonna get arrested. I couldn't tell because I'm like bleeding everywhere. And I was like, we're from New York and we're just like, filming a music video. And like, got really mad at us. Like, how fun, like trying to like find a way to like not like, not get in trouble. And he just kind of chased everyone away. And all these people were kind of gawking, like, oh my god, like, oh my god, it actually is a woman, oh my god. Like, <laughs> yeah, the moment that you took the, ma the mask off, everyone went, oh my god, like, yeah. I'm a person. Yeah, it's like, like and it's a lady. woman. And we just did that to her. And yeah. then everyone just, like, faltered, like, slinked away yeah. from us. And then, the, like, later, these girls came up to us who were fucking following us around the whole time, and we noticed later. They're like, are you okay? Are you like, okay? Like, we thought other people were doing that too. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we have everyone filmed the whole time. Like, yeah. Yeah, and then we tried to clean the wound at an ice cream shop and they wouldn't give us water, which is just like, <laughs> that speaks to the climate of where we were. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. So there was like, yeah, there was kind of a lot of mental crap going into it. But like, like we said, there was really no anticipating how violent it was going to get. Because I didn't, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it's like naive that we didn't think it was going to be like that, but... We're New Yorkers, how would we... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, though, it's weird, though, like, in Times Square two weeks ago, I had, I, I had freakishly similar, I was getting, like, war flash, like, war flash, I was like, oh my god, they're, like, going to start throwing bottles in my head, and, like, mm -hmm. they were, they were mean. People just get so brutal when they don't understand what's going on. And only one person in American Reflex says, like, Oh, it's pretentious high art. Pretentious high art. Like only one person <laughs> derogatively accuses it of maybe being art, and I think that that's like another interesting facet. That's interesting. I love it. I just think it's like so interesting that like art is clearly so devoid in 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 the culture at large that like only one person out of like the entire hour that we filmed like said the a word, you know. And, like, <laughs> I think that that is like another really big, that's kind of what makes the film important to me is like just getting art into the eyes of people who don't normally think or look at it. So, that's how I feel. Anything else? Any other questions? Nope. Ding. Uh -huh. Great, thanks you guys right, so yeah, much for coming.